This afternoon on the final bar, we have the mystery chart, the popular segment where we'll show you a surprising chart and help you guess which one it is. We'll break down sector setups, looking at sector leadership and laggership, looking specifically at financials versus some of the more conservative defensive stuff, utilities, real estate, all sort of struggling. We'll finish up with the three and three today on the final bar. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's edition of The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington. Really appreciate you joining us today and every day. As always, you can get to us via email, uh, thefinalbar at StockCharts.com. Also get to us on Twitter, at FinalBarSCTV. Interesting day today, a little bit of distribution, sort of a choppy uh, sideways market as we digest all the news flow, the earnings, the trade negotiations, et cetera, et cetera. And in the end, it's all about directionally where the markets are uh, are going. And overall, a little bit of a pullback, but still, I would argue, an offense mode versus defense. We're going to unpack a lot of those themes uh, during the show today. Before we get to that, I just want to remind everyone, we'll be speaking at the Las Vegas Traders Expo that's coming up this coming weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, November 7th through 9th uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, I'll be speaking Friday evening, a session uh, called the five modes of mindful investors. We're going to talk about some of the um, things in your head that can get in the way of uh, good financial decisions and how to, uh, you know, get around those using good routines and looking at a number of uh, of key charts. So we'll talk about all that. Hope to see you there. Uh, they also, also some streaming options if you can't get to Las Vegas in person. So you know, thinking of the action today, you know, we we we've looked last week into this week at a market that you know, seems incredibly resilient, right? We've broken to new highs. We've now validated those new highs. The resistance we had from the end of July, you know, sort of uh, held in September as we never quite got there. But then new closing highs. And over the last five to 10 days, we've had new closing highs, new trading highs. And then, uh, you know, going into the beginning of this week, you know, further, further strength. Uh, yesterday, a bit of a, of a sideways sort of distribution day a little bit, gave it a little bit of, of it back, uh, closing below the open and on the spiders that closes a little bit further down. Today, another sort of distribution day of, of sorts where we're trading lower than the open, but again, overall in such a good place on the long-term trend. And, and again, the, the key with the show is connect the short-term action with the long-term trends, understanding the, the long-term ramifications of what we're seeing uh, minute to minute. So just a quick observation here. Let's look at the last five days. We'll uh, pay attention to the long-term trend and start to look at some of the individual uh, themes that we're, that we're seeing here. So the last two days, when I talk about distribution days, you can see sort of what that means, right? After um, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was a gap higher and a resilient close, you know, closing at the highs for the week there on Friday. Big gap up on on Monday, and then you know, sort of slow and steady gave most of it back. A nice rally into the close yesterday, which we talked about. Today, sort of the opposite, right? Sort of a distribution out of the open in the first uh, in the first hour. Choppy, you know, action. We got back toward the highs of the day, but again, the last hour, 30, 30 to sixty minutes, more distributive. And again, that end of the day is when a lot of the institutions are are starting to move volume, starting to make. Uh, larger changes in position. So the distribution at the end, you know, certainly more negative than positive, uh, you know, all else being equal in the market. But again, overall, this is one data point just in the last week. You can see we're still in a very, very good place relative to where uh, where we've been. And, and overall, the trend certainly has been uh, positive by a lot of measures. Um, you know, just looking at the price itself, again, when we make higher highs and higher lows, the trend is up by definition. That's certainly what we're seeing. If we look at the Mindful Investor Live chart list, a couple things that sort of support this continued upward, upward trend. This is the breadth by cap tiers that we've looked at a number of times on the show. And I color code these every weekend when I sort of go through the charts. Green for positive, orange for neutral, red for negative. And this is the cumulative advanced decline lines for some of the, the key cap tiers. So this is the S&P 500 in the top. The broader New York Stock Exchange, the S&P mid cap, and the S&P small cap index. Look how all four of these 
um, to new highs. Uh, and this is uh, as of Friday. Um, so today, I, would, I wouldn't imagine them to change uh, a ton from that, depending on or, or based on what, what we saw today. So overall, you know, all four of these sort of confirming sort of a long and strong up and to the right, fairly healthy, uh, healthy market. Um, we've had an influx of new highs, which has really been sort of a change of character. Uh, you know, we've had sort of this uh, divergence at times over the last couple months where the market's pushing higher, but less stocks going to new highs. That seems to have changed here. We had a similar pattern in the middle of October that we did to the middle of June, where we had an increasing number of new highs as the market tested and, and broke to new, uh, to new closing highs. Now you can see that every day we've had more and more new highs um, starting the middle of last week. So as we've pushed, the market has pushed new highs. A lot of stocks, actually more and more of them actually participating in that, which which is pretty key. And then the last one I want to show you is just the relative performance of semiconductors. We're going to talk about, about sector setups uh, a little later in the show, and we'll talk about some of the different themes. But I think it's worth noting that one of the key industries to follow, if you had one industry that you paid attention to, just to get an overall market tell, uh, semiconductors aren't a bad bet because they tend to do very well in bull phases, tend to underperform in bear market phases. They just sort of tend to be at the, you know, at the edge. They tend to be leading on the way up and lagging on the way down and overall have broken above resistance and, and just continue to follow through. So, you know, a lot of signs that were sort of neutral, uh, you know, questionable, I think all resolving uh, more to the upside, which is which is interesting. We're going to talk about sector themes in a little bit. So I don't, don't want to get too deep in that. I want to look rather at um, some of the key uh, indexes, maybe intermarket analysis to pay attention to. So, you know, bonds are really interesting. We've looked at the chart of the TL a number of times uh, uh, since we started the show uh, a little while back. And, you know, the way I saw the TLT was sort of this consolidation of sorts after the peak you had at the end of August, sort of coming down, selling off quickly in September. Then you have this narrowing of the range. And at this point, it sort of felt like this consolidation pattern, this coil type of pattern. Um, but what's happened is it really didn't complete. We sort of broke down through the lower trend line, rallied back into, uh, into last weekend, but now have reversed and, uh, you know, just again tested the lows from last week. Um, today, not a new closing low for the for the last couple months, but pretty, pretty close. So, you know, if that would resolve lower, if you'd see a breakdown of support, so 136 is sort of the lower end of that pattern. That's what you tend to tend to think. So when you have a market that rallies and consolidates, you have the high 148, you have the low 136. The market's going to resolve one way or the other. And usually whichever way that momentum drives out of the pattern is, is usually what you'd expect to continue. So it's really on the uh, on the breakdown watch. Not quite there, but uh, but boy, really, really close. You know, within the commodity space, we've had a lot of interesting uh, movements. Gold pulling back today down uh, below 140 again. This is on the GLD I'm looking at here. And a similar type of pattern. You know, I was seeing this pattern of lower highs, lower lows, almost felt like a bull flag, which is when you have a big rally and then a parallel downtrend, a little bit of a shorter term pullback. Felt like it was resolving to the upside. So you had a breakout through the trend line. To me, that feels like, wow, gold's really going to rip. But, you know, since then really has not been able to break above resistance around 145 or so. And now back to the lower end of the range. So same thing. A breakdown of 138 would be sort of a different configuration, sort of a weakness in gold and uh, and so forth. We don't have time to get to the uh, to the U.S. dollar, but I'd certainly encourage you to look at that uh, as well. The dollar index showing some really interesting patterns, another pullback. Uh, over the last couple of weeks that is similar to patterns we've seen previously uh, during the year have all resolved higher, by the way. The next segment, uh, really quick to introduce the mystery chart. This is a popular uh, segment we like to do where what we'll do is show you a chart, cover up the tickers, um, just show you the pattern and, and some information and have you guess what it is. So if you have a guess on what this security is, would you put it in the chat room and later we'll reveal what this is and why it's an important chart to pay attention to. My only hints to you, this is the daily price for the last two years at the top. The purple line, the trend line is my own drawing. The 50 and 200 day moving averages at the bottom. This is the relative performance of this security relative to the spiders, relative to the S&P 500. So you can see over the last two years, has underperformed and most of that underperformance has come in the last year. So the question is, what is this security? And again, later in the show, we'll share the answer and talk a little bit about why it's an, an important chart to, uh, to pay attention to, an important chart to know. This next segment now is called Sector Setups. And uh, if you're not familiar with Julius DeKempener's work, I'd encourage you to watch his show on Stock Charts TV. Uh, if you've missed it, go to YouTube and, and check out some of the 
um, some of the old segments that he's done talking about not just relative rotation graphs, which is what we're going to start with, but also just the general idea of sector rotation. He does a really good job of, of thinking about how assets like that rotate around a benchmark. And again, for institutional investors, this is, you know, this is central to your process, understanding sector strength and weakness and where you have the opportunity to outperform and, and understanding the relative movements relative to the benchmark in the, in the middle is such a key part of how you have to think about things. So I found individuals tend to underthink this part of it to their own detriment because relative strength, while it not may, be, may not be the main way you measure your performance, like you would if you're an institutional investor, it still really tells you a lot about your ability to be in the right assets at the right time. So certainly worth paying attention to. <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is looking at a weekly relative rotation graph this has the 11 S&P sectors, and just to orient you, the S&P 500 in the middle, further to the right means it's outperforming, further to the left means it's underperforming, and we're showing the last four observations going back week to week. So it's the current, and then the last four that you that you see back there, the previous four weeks. Now, it's based on a little bit of longer-term data. It's, it's Julius's proprietary uh, you know, algorithm we're using to sort of calculate this, but essentially it's relative to the spot in the middle. Now, what you've seen here, and again, if that didn't make sense, I'd encourage you to look at the Chart School articles and, and Julius's videos, but what this is showing you over the last you know, six weeks, four to six weeks, is this rotation on the weekly time frame, on this longer term time frame, away from some of the defensive stuff. So utilities, real estate, staples had been way up here in the leading quadrant, you know, showing how strong those had been. And that's very much a change. So I'm gonna just put it in motion uh, a bit here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we have enough room. So this is what things look like. And on the S&P chart on the right, this is the market pullback July uh, into August. You can see how, uh, you know, overall, once we uh, rallied, it wasn't the juice that was rallying. It wasn't uh, technology, consumer discretionary that's up in the leading quadrant here. It was more of the defensive stuff, utilities, real estate, staples. Look at how that reversed, though, at the beginning of October. And now all of those really defensive uh, portions of the market have rolled down are now in the weakening quadrant, joining technology, which is down here. So what's happened now, technology actually did a bit of a 180. It had rotated down here. And then in the last uh, sort of four to six weeks has rotated back up. And looking back at this, at this uh, methodology for a number of years, I will tell you one of the things that's most compelling is when something gets into the weakening quadrant and sort of turns back and advances back into the leading quadrant, which is what technology has sort of done. This speaks to the resiliency of uh, resilience of, of semiconductors, which have done so well on a relative basis. And I think broader, broadly speaking, technology as well, looking fairly attractive according to this methodology. The only two that are currently in the leading quadrant now, now that utilities have rotated lower, is uh, financials, XLF, and the industrials, which actually just popped in here over the last week, the XLI. So these are the two that have actually rotated into the leading quadrant. Now, again, further to the right means it's outperformed, which is why utilities, real estate on a relative basis still have held up pretty well. But the fact that it's rotating down and to the left tells you that the momentum is waning. And we're going to look at a chart of the XLU and you'll see why that actually is playing out. So it's telling you on a relative basis, it's sort of rolling away and we're favoring some of the other uh, things in this, uh, some of the other sectors that have emerged. The XLE energy is actually really interesting as well. Now firmly in the improving quadrant, continues to rotate northeast, which is sort of the most bullish movement that you can have. So if this continues higher, you know, we've just started to see energy do well in the last couple of days. That would continue if you continue to see that uh, increase. That tells you a lot about uh, a rotation of leadership away from the really defensive stuff that had been uh, in some of the strongest positions uh, relative to uh, relative to others. The next thing I like to do thinking about sectors is looking at the candle glance. So this is looking at the 11 S&P sectors and then the S&P 500 in the bottom right. And again, this serves two purposes. Number one, just seeing where these are at relative to one another. So which ones are in a bullish configuration versus bearish configuration? Which ones are making new highs? Which ones are sort of stagnant? Which ones are breaking to new swing lows? Where are they at relative to the moving averages? And then looking at them from 30,000 feet and seeing where the movements are. So things that jump out when you're looking at this, I think there's a reason why technology has held up so well on the RRG chart. If you look at it, again, it's sort of uh, you know at new highs, continues to show new closing highs that's in the left side of the screen here you know really uh, in, out of all of the uh, of the of the sectors technology probably looks most constructive and i would say financials is probably the second best out of the out of the 11 followed maybe my materials which is now completely broken above 
resistance and going higher. Industrial is probably in that bucket as well. So there are a group of sectors that have really held up very, very nicely. And again, if you didn't know that the market was sort of choppy and confusing at times, you wouldn't know it based on those charts actually look like they're holding up very, very well. Second key observation is a breakdown in a number of sectors. Uh, and again, it's still early days, but if you look at a chart of the XLU, um, you know, again, this is looking at the last two years just to give you a good amount of history but up until now you've had just this this fantastic consistent uptrend higher highs higher lows relative performance holding up very very well and again a big part of the utilities return is the dividend component which is you know tends to be much more elevated on this sector than others so overall it's been a pretty consistent generator of wealth for a lot of investors but now we've had a pretty solid resistance level just right around the 65 uh, handle for the xlu it's now tested support around 63. And then just today, we've now broken down to a new swing low that's com uh, combined with the relative strength here on the bottom, the relative performance now breaking to a new two month low as well. Look at the uh, chart of real estate and you'll see it's in a similar configuration. Now, again, this is not, you know, I can't tell you this is the end of the trend and you need to get out of these sectors immediately. I, I mean, it's the beginning of a move. It's not the end of it by any means, but the fact that these sectors that have been so resilient are now breaking down. So the XLRE, which is a real estate spider, you know, has now broken down through the 50 day moving average for the first time since the end of last year, has broken down through its most previous swing low. So now you have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. That is not what uptrends are made of folks. That's more of a distributive pattern. And again, on a relative basis has broken down through uh, the low from uh, from September. So utilities in real estate, which had been a question mark, you know, how can the market be doing so well when utes and real estate are leading? That's potentially starting to change a little bit. It's a little bit of a change of character. You compare that to something like technology, which is broken to new highs, and you see why it feels more like institutions are rotating more on offense and really pushing the market um, to further highs. The XLF is one chart we've looked at a number of times. And again, if I had one sector chart, semiconductors would be maybe my main uh, tell looking at an industry, I would say the XLF chart, if I had to pick one of the sectors to pay attention to, this is probably one of them. Um, you know, you can see this basing pattern that's been building for the last two years. It's a head and shoulder, an inverted head and shoulder type pattern, a low surrounded by a series of higher lows. You might call this a complex head and shoulder uh, if you're studying for the CMT exams, uh, coincidentally. But, uh, but overall, it's clearly a basing pattern. And that essentially means a consistent resistance level, a level that we've stalled out at a number of times. And now all of a sudden that has changed. So we broke above that resistance area, 28.25 to 28.75 have now followed through to go to a new price high and a new closing high uh, over the last two sessions. And if you look at the relative strength, you can see it's made a new, uh, you know, really a new six to eight month high on the relative on a relative basis, which is pretty, uh, pretty positive. So financials have been a sector that were an underperformer last year, really a market performer for most of this year, but all of a sudden potentially you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, capitulating or, or or resolving that basing pattern to the upside, which is uh, which is pretty pretty impressive. You know, looking at consumer discretionary versus consumer staples, you know, I noticeably did not mention consumer discretionary as one of the really attractive charts. And that's just because others have already gone to new highs that have already pushed through. Consumer discretionary, not as good because there are a number of areas there that are a little weaker than, than others. Same with consumer staples. You have things like restaurants that are breaking down. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and elsewhere, but you have hotels that are breaking out, sort of a, a mixed bag of, of, uh, of groups and of themes. So overall, not a real clear uh, signal there. But I would tell you that one of the, the charts on our, on our live chart list is looking at the ratio of consumer discretionary versus staples. That's what I'm showing you here. You know, it, all I can tell you at this point is that the ratio doesn't seem to be going down anymore. I can't tell you that this is resolved to the upside and that's sort of how it feels. You know, you had this period of clear outperformance of the offensive side of consumer. You had this period of underperformance of the offensive side or outperformance of the more conservative staples names. But in the last two months, you've sort of had this sideways consolidation pattern, a consistent high, if not a little bit of a lower high, a higher low. And now we're sort of in the middle of that range. So this trend line taking the highs from April to July, pretty important. We line up with that in October. Again, we just violated that. I, I don't think you can say that it's broken to new highs, but if you see the ratio break above that high from September, I think you could say that this is now favoring offense, but not quite yet. 
But again, so overall, you know, what's the sector picture? I think it's favoring a lot of ways recently. It's favoring some of the more offensive stuff that we had not seen. That's a very different character than what we've been talking about, you know, a couple weeks ago, even not to, not that long ago. So certainly seems to confirm the, uh, the new highs that we're seeing uh, in the equity markets overall. So that's our sector setups for, uh, for today. We're going to take a brief commercial break. We'll be back and unveil what the mystery chart is and why you should know uh, that chart intimately. We'll be back in one minute. Today's market volatility provides savvy traders and active investors with an abundance of profitable opportunities. At the Traders Expo Las Vegas, November 7th through 9th, over 75 of the most respected traders in the world, including Dennis Gartman, Tom Sosnoff, Todd Gordon, and Tom DeMarc, will explain how they're adapting their strategies and share the specific trading opportunities they've identified in equities, options, forex, futures, cryptocurrencies, and more. Claim your free pass to join them at TradersExpo.com. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us today on the uh, the final bar. I want to get to the mystery chart in a second. You probably noticed that um, at the last minute. I just wanted to point out to you on your members dashboard, we now in the market overview section have a, a little grouping called crypto. This will show you the major uh, cryptocurrencies, the top 10. You can click on any of them to look at the charts, get the tickers and so forth, or click down to see the, uh, the little mini chart. That's a brand new edition uh, just as of about an hour ago here on uh, stockcharts.com. Did you guess what the mystery chart was? A number of you put in guesses. Thanks so much for, uh, for doing it. My producer tells me the USO was one guess, uh, which is the US oil ETF. Very fine guess, very incorrect, but that's okay. Good guess. DBC was the second one, the Commodity Index Tracking Fund. Also a very good guess. You get, you get partial credit for that, but not 100% credit. That's a decent guess. Cause is, is it, is, it is a, uh, com, a commodity tracking index. But you have the wrong one. Um, and it actually is the GSG, which is the uh, iShares S&P GSCI Commodity Index Trucks Trust, <laughs> ticker GSG. Now, there are a number of indexes that all track commodities. There's the CRB index. There's the GSCI index. Um, there's the DBC. These all have basically different weightings. And a lot of them are uh, usually it's the energy weighting that gets really exaggerated with some of them. So, you know, some of them will really map the, the movements in oil because it's such a big weight. Um, but uh, but again, it's sort of a preference thing, to be honest. I've seen them all used at different different places. So I picked one of them, G the GSG. So a number of you uh, honed in on the commodity play, which, uh, you know, well done there. That's that's totally fair. I'm just going to quickly change the chart to show you why it's an interesting one. So this one, if I look at the last two years of data, just give me a second. So if you look at the last two years on the GSG, what's interesting is this is something that out underperformed and sold off aggressively going into the market bottom at the end of last year. So, you know, it, it sold off while stocks were selling off as well. And then when it rallied, it sort of rallied along with the market. You can see the relative strength is sort of uh, sideways. But then look at what's happened since then. As stocks actually held up, went up very nicely. Uh, bonds actually have done very well. Commodities have sort of been left behind. It's been the other thing. Um, and the reason why I think it's so important is because it's fallen off so many people's radar. We're not really mentally in a place where we're expecting commodity strength. The reason why I think this is an interesting one is we've seen how energy uh, has popped up on a number of uh, of recent days. Today, it was the number two sector behind financials. So while financials have actually done uh, done very well, and that was one of our key sector charts, we didn't really look at energy, but don't look now, the XLE has actually rallied very, very nicely in the last couple of sessions, testing the 200 day from below. And a lot of that is gonna be driven by um, the strength in, uh, in commodities, obviously with oil and, and the commodities complex. So. The reason why I think this chart is interesting is, is, again, I love to think about transitions from accumulation to distribution or from distribution to accumulation. And when I see this pattern, when I have a clear trend line coming off the highs from last fall, lining up the highs from the spring and seeing that tested a number of times, we had our huge false breakout in September as the GSG uh, gapped higher. We can see that it came right back down, did not make a lower low. And I think that was the first kind of key metric. We then tested the 200 day from below, pulled back, which is totally reasonable. And now this appears to have been a, a higher low, which sort of 
uh, you know, a lot of times when you break out of a trend line, you'll have a pullback and test the trend line. Now we've broken to a new swing high. So it almost feels like this is transitioning from a period of distribution to a period of, you know, at least consolidation and now a potentially, uh, you know, a, a, a sign of accumulation. You know, I would really on a chart like this want to see a break above these resistance levels from July and September. That's when we have seen strength historically. That's when it's petered out. So you'd really want to see it, you know, be able to push through those uh, resistance levels in the 16 to 1625 range on the GSG. But again, the last couple of days have actually been pretty resilient or pretty, pretty impressive. If that would continue and if the relative strength would start to improve, especially if you see stocks, you know, breaking out, but a lot of the indecision still in the equity markets, I tell you, I'm always looking for the pain trade and the pain trade, you know, what someone once said, the market will, will move in a way that causes the most pain to the most investors. And so, you know, the pain trade is basically identifying a theme or a movement that would be unexpected and that people would not be positioned for. And the problem is you're caught on the wrong side of it and you have to make some, some changes very quickly to compensate for it. And I would say if we enter a period where commodities actually do well and oil rallies and the GSG and, and the CRB and the DBC, all of those uh, commodity indexes go higher, I'm not necessarily sure it's going to happen. But boy, I do know if it did happen, a lot of people would be caught flat footed with that sort of movement. So keep an eye on this chart. Also, keep an eye on the XLE. If you see strength in those, I think those are those are uh, you know areas that you might want to consider at the very least. I mean, you don't want to be naked them. You start to think about where you know they might 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 round a, a you know better round out your uh, your positioning uh, overall. So that was the mystery chart. Listen, job well done. I'm impressed with Team Final Bar as usual. You guys have had some decent guesses, pretty close to the right answer. So uh, I will continue to try to elevate the complexity of my choices for you. We now are going to wrap up the show with the three and three. As you know, at the end of every show, we look at three charts in three minutes. If these charts aren't on your radar yet, I certainly hope that they that they are now. Um, you know, we've circulated a number of these before. And so it's the ones that during my regular routine of looking at these charts, uh, they, they're the ones that tend to bubble up. They're the ones that I make a note to uh, to pay attention to. And I'm sharing them with you here. The first one is the S&P breadth by cap tiers. We, we showed this earlier in the show during our market recap. And again, you don't have to do the fancy color coding if you're if you're not into it, that's totally fine. But what you do wanna do is look at the advanced decline lines on each of these different markets. And one of the critiques, one of the criticisms of the bull market up until now, I would say, has been the lack of participation of small caps and mid caps. So how come the market's doing fine, but small caps and mid caps not really participating? This measure of breadth, looking at mid cap and small cap names, tells you that the breadth is actually holding up pretty well, and even in some of the smaller, more speculative names. So overall, that's telling you long and strong markets are doing pretty well. The second chart for the three and three is the uh, BKX. This is the banking index. Uh, a lot of ways you can look at uh, look at banks. We talked about the XLF earlier, but I think you know if you think about the weighting in the XLF, it's dominated by some of the big banks. The biggest stock is Berkshire Hathaway, but after that, it's J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, some of these big names and all of those charts have really rallied and resolved to the upside look at the chart of the bkx look at the resistance that we had here over the last year right about 102 103 look at how we've now broken above that retested the resistance level from above and now resolved higher you know we're entering this uh, sort of congestion area around 112 which would be my next sort of upside uh, objective for it but overall chart looks pretty good and look on a relative basis we're at a new six month relative high which is pretty impressive for a part of the market that a lot of us have been i think ignoring in terms of positioning the third chart for the three and three today is the chart of the xlu we talked about this during our uh, sector setup section. Again, I think this potential breakdown here in the beginning of a breakdown that we've seen from utes and real estate is a very different uh, you know, environment than what we've seen up until now. These have, have been areas that surprisingly have been leading, have been to new price highs, while things like technology and consumer names have not been as strong. And that's been sort of a, a weird thing to try and resolve in your heads. It certainly seems to be resolving away from the defensive part of the markets and into the more offensive parts. So really equity investors are betting on the juice. They're betting on a continued uptrend. And that certainly seems to be what's happening, uh, voting with their feet. So this XLU chart, and I would say the XLRE is similar, similar idea. If they continue to break down, if this break of the 50 day was just the beginning, if we continue to sell off, if we rotate away, and if the relative strength continues to go down, that tells you to really be leaning into the offensive side of the market, because that's where the opportunity is, uh, is leading. 
That's our show for today on, uh, on, uh, on November 5th, 2019. Thanks so much for joining us today. You can get to us via email, thefinalbar at stockcharts.com or on Twitter at finalbarsctv. Really appreciate your questions. We go through the mailbag segment very regularly and uh, appreciate your, your questions. Also, your feedback, anything we can do to make this 30 minutes more helpful to you, we'd certainly uh, want to hear it. Hope to see you this week in Las Vegas and uh, from Redmond, Washington, stockcharts.com. This is Dave Keller. Have a good night. Thank you.